2017 marked a significant year for Canada as the country came together to celebrate our 150th year. The celebrations also brought to light issues surrounding our Aboriginal Canadians whose ancestors have been living on Canadian soils for far more than 150 years. Recently, more attention has been put towards the history of our First Nations, Inuit and Métis communities and what we can all do to help these people within these communities to heal from the past, as well as what we can all do with regards to reconciliation. I first met our guest today at an event in Toronto. I was impressed with his wisdom on healing and his ideas on forgiveness. His name is Elder Little Brown Bear, who runs the Aboriginal Healing Program for the Toronto East Health Network. He was inducted into the Order of Ontario in the spring of 2017. He has been recognized by his exceptional volunteer work. He is an extraordinary man, and we are so honored to have him with us today. Welcome, Elder Little Brown Bear. Uh, bonjour. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. so glad you're here. Thank you. So let's begin with uh, the work you're doing. I mean, it's significant. People are reaching out to acknowledge what you're doing. So let's share with the viewers what that is. So a lot of what, uh, what, what I'm doing right now is with the Toronto East uh, Health Network. Uh, and we're called the Aboriginal Healing Program. And um, I'm very proud to say that we just received our accreditation through Accreditations Canada. So we're now recognized as a leading practice uh, program. And so, uh, part of the program is when people come in, um, a lot of them have been beaten down, um, a lot of uh, things have happened to them, uh, they're in jail, uh, some of them are homeless, um, addictions, uh, some mental health issues or mental well-being as we call them, and a lot of trauma issues. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things that we do there is we look at what trauma that they've had. Uh, trauma, um, if you look at what trauma is, Trauma drives addictions and also mental mm. health or mental well-being issues. Absolutely. So when they start to look at the trauma issues, um, they start to heal themselves. And then pretty soon they're not using drugs or alcohol or food or sex or computers or stuff to numb the pain, you know, to, right. to escape. So they're not using a, a lot of that. And they're actually now they're getting on their healing journeys. Okay. It takes a lot of courage for a person to come and to start their healing journeys takes a lot of courage to ask for help mm. for them as well. So a lot of the work that we do there, we uh, do things around forgiveness, uh, building healthy relationships, uh, grief and loss, um, anger release. Okay. I don't do anger management. I don't believe in that name. Management is like um, managing your bank accounts. And we all know how that works out sometimes. <laughs> we just can't do it. So we teach around the inner and outer circles of anger, uh, styles of anger, um, positives of anger as well, because anger can also be used as a motivator Absolutely. to help people on their journeys. Um, and we do things on the seven grandfather teachings, uh, the medicine wheel teachings, harmony and balance. We do uh, many activities, our beating, our uh, drum making. We also do a lot of our ceremonies there too. So. Mm -hmm we'll have uh, feasting the bundles, for instance. And those are those sacred items that we have or we've been honored with throughout our journeys. And we feast them four times a year. So we feast them um, with the seasons. Uh, we're coming up to winter now. We just finished doing our, our fall feasting. So in January, we will be feasting our bundles um, for the winter feast. Uh, we have naming ceremonies as well. Uh, we also do things around memorial feasts. So when somebody passes on, um, a year later, we'll have a memorial feast for them. Right. So there's, there's many things that we do um, at the program. So yeah, I was gonna say, that's a lot. You know, you just rhymed off a lot of stuff. And you use um, your Aboriginal healing techniques. So you brought some of those things in today. Do you wanna um, to explain a little bit more about what you actually do with them? Sure, um, I'll let you hold the eagle feather. Um, so they're not techniques. Okay. What they are is they're the medicines that we use to help heal okay. on a person's journey. Um, if, if, if we look at, and we always put them in a paper bag or a box, we don't put our, our medicines in plastic. So we always put them um, in, in paper or, or a box and sage 
So we'll use sage and we'll, and we'll burn the sage in our smudge bowl, okay. which is what we use. And we'll burn this um, in the morning um, when the community members come in. We don't call them clients. We don't call them patients. That's clinical. Right. We call them community members. So when they come into the program, um, every morning we have a morning smudge. And part of that smudge is, is, is using sage. And sage helps to, to get rid of the negative energies. Um, our program is right downtown. So when you're coming from that concrete jungle into a sacred room, it's nice to know that you'll be able to smudge and you'll be able to, to get rid of that negative energy. And it helps to rebalance a person. Whenever I'm working with um, people that have been sexually abused, um, I always have sage and, uh, in my smudge bowl to help them bring their spirit and to calm their spirit once again, because that can be some really tough issues, especially those traumas from the past. Right. So you have sage and... Well, we also have um, tobacco. And this is ceremonial tobacco. This is, doesn't have any chemicals in it. And we'll, we'll put some tobacco in there because we'll, we'll say our prayers and we'll talk to the Creator and we'll put our tobacco for our prayers that, that are in there. You know, one of the things that I've been taught is you don't pray for yourself, you pray for others. But you do ask the Creator to, to guide you each and every day so that you're able to do things in a good way. So we use this to communicate with one another. We use this in our ceremonial pipes whenever we have ceremonies as well. Um, so it's a way of communicating with the spirits. It's a way of communicating with uh, the Creator. And it's also a way of communicating when somebody comes to an elder and they're looking for a spirit name. They will, they will provide tobacco to that elder. And that elder will accept that tobacco. And if not, they will give it back and they will send them to somebody that can do what they've asked. So if they're asking for a spirit name, they will accept that tobacco. And then the elder will put that tobacco and smoke it in his ceremonial pipe and communicate with the spirits. And the spirits will nudge that, that, that elder so the elder can give that name to that person. Great, wow. This is so much in a short period of time. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about what Elder uh, Little Brown Bear is doing um, at his health unit and also um, how he came to do this. It's great. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you're just joining us now, we're speaking with Elder Little Brown Bear. He is a respected Métis helper, community capacity builder, and spiritual ambassador who blends Aboriginal teachings with Western information to provide a holistic healing approach for Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. And so, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and before the break, you were going through all the different um, things you use mm -hmm. uh, for healing. So you talked about the sage, we talked about the tobacco. Um, you've brought something else there. It looks like cedar. Yes. Um, tell us about that. Okay, so I've got sweetgrass and I've also got cedar. And, and we use cedar a lot on our healing journeys. And uh, we use, we, 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 we will boil this. Okay. And we'll make cedar tea to help and um, people will drink this to help cleanse their inside, but it also helps them sleep at night too. Sometimes a person's mind is racing a lot. Right. When we're dealing with, uh, with abuse issues, uh, we'll have cedar baths okay. as well. So we'll boil the water, uh, we'll boil the, the cedar in it for 20 minutes, and then we'll put that into the bathtub. So it works inside and out? <laughs> and both, both. Um, sometimes we'll put it on the bottom of our shoes so that helps us, especially if our spirit isn't, uh, isn't in a good way. We'll put that at the bottom of our shoes so that we'll be able to help us walk in a good way. Wow, so it's very grounding. It's, it's, very... it's a very grounding um, as well as the, the sage are. Whenever we burn the cedar in, this, in the uh, smudge bowl, it'll crackle. And that's, that makes the spirits dance. And that means that we're inviting them to come and help us. In the sacred room that we have uh, with all the spirit animals on the wall, uh, whenever we burn that, it's inviting them to help us that day. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this is really powerful stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you also, sweetgrass, what's that about then? Uh, sweetgrass, so sweetgrass is, is, um, is known as Mother Earth's hair. Oh. And it's, um, we use this for, for cleansing as well. We use it first for smudging as well. And sometimes we'll use it whenever we're having a feast. We'll light the sweet grass and we'll put that over the food. So we're, we're smudging the, the food as well. And we're giving thanks for that food. And they're usually in three braids. Now, my, for my teachings, um, the, the three braids uh, represents the three nations, which gives it strength. So First Nations, Inuit, and Métis nations, because they're three distinct nations. And if, if you go back to, if you take one stick, you can break it pretty simple. But if you put three sticks together, right. it's a lot harder. So that represents, uh, for me, is the, the three nations that have come together and that brings strength okay. for one another. Great. Now, I want to ask you if you get this question. You know, there's people who are, say, traditionally purely trained in Western medicine, and they might think, how could these plants, how could they really do anything? Do you get that? And if so, how would you speak to that? Um, absolutely. I mean, that happens from time to time. And so I invite individuals. Uh, they come in uh, to the program, or I go out, and I also do some education. And for it, for, for an instance, anxiety. Um, I use lavender, and there's a few other medicines in there. And uh, we have found that lavender really helps to calm a person. Um, there was a person that was in the program that couldn't leave their house. And uh, finally, they did come into to the program. And uh, a year and a half later, um, they're now going back to work. Right. They're riding the subway. Right. Um, so, Medicines, if you take care of these medicines, they're going to take care of you. Right. So we treat them. Whenever I pick cedar, I put tobacco down, and I give thanks for the cedar given its life. The same thing is when, is when we harvest or we hunt. Uh, whatever, we, whatever animal gives up their life, we also put tobacco down, and we say thank you. You see, chimigwitch, big thank you for, for giving your life, for providing us food, for pr providing us, us clothing because right. we make our clothes and stuff with that. Yeah. I know I had a conversation with someone and thought, my belief is, you know, how could we possibly be on this planet without being given medicines that kind of come with, with Mother Earth, with, plant, with mm -hmm. the planet? So for me, it feels very true that these, um, these things that we find in nature have a healing element. We've just been so disconnected that we've lost that information for many people. Fortunately, mm -hmm. we have people like you who bring <laughs> us back to knowing these kind of things. So tell me, Elder Little Brown Bear, where did Elder come from, that name? How did you come to be helping in this healing field? Uh, well, I've been in the helping field for the better part of 30 years. Um, I remember um, in the Army, um, we had an anonymous group for abused men because they wouldn't um, speak about being beaten up by their wives. So it all started from there. Um, I went to um, um, uh, nursing, uh, psychiatric nursing, uh, gerontology nursing. I did go to school for that. Um, I left that um, and I went uh, into um, addictions. I graduated from Canada College. Uh, we were the first, I call us guinea pigs <laughs> to go through because it was a very uh, new course, um, and then I just continued in the in the helping field. I remember my first position uh, was way up in Kenora, oh, and I then um, I came back to Ontario, and I've been working ever since in it. I went to Brock University, uh, completed my my Bachelor of Education in Aboriginal Studies as well. Um, yeah, I've always been in the helping field. Right. And here you are now. At, tell me again that the name of the program is the Aboriginal Healing, Healing Program. Program. Yeah, through the Toronto East Health Network. Okay. Um, you know what's interesting? Um, people just need to call, and I set up an intake. There's no waiting list. I don't believe in a waiting list, and I've never had a waiting list. So I took over this program about uh, about six years ago. You know, and I think back. I remember the person that hired me, his name was Doug Smith, and um, uh, I went into a sweat lodge and I had a vision, and when I came out, I went to Doug and I said, uh, yes, I will do the program. He, I said, i got to close the program for two weeks. He said, well, no, you can't do that. And I said, I can't work for you then. 
Hmm. And he said, okay, close the program. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my first year we were there, we did 173 intakes. And now we're close to 400 intakes every, every year. So have you just increased in staff? How do you no. deal with that? Uh, for the first two years, um, I commuted six hours a day to Toronto. Um, there was just myself for the first two years. Uh, and then after that, um, we hired uh, an assistant. Her name is Suzanne, and uh, she's my assistant into the program. So it allows me to go into the community. I give her the teachings, what she needs to teach. We don't give handouts there. Uh, we teach, my elder taught me PROI, Perpetual Repetitive Oral Indoctrination. So all the traditional uh, teachings and the blending of the mainstream teachings are all done orally. So we do write them on the board, but it's up to them to, for them to write it. And so they learn three ways, by seeing, by hearing, and by writing it. You know, I've, I've often um, said that the smartest people in the world are not the people that have PhDs. The smartest people in the world are the people that can learn, unlearn, and then relearn again. Mm. So when they're coming through there, and there's no judgment, uh, people aren't judged, they're, they're welcome with all open arms. And so they've learned a way of coping now they're unlearning it, and they're learning it a healthier way of coping, of problem solving. So they're learning all of these things now. Learning a lot, yes, and so are we. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with Elder Little Brown Bear. Welcome back. I'm speaking today with Elder Little Brown Bear, a respected Métis healer who has been recognized with awards by several organizations for his contributions to assisting uh, the Aboriginal community at Toronto East Health Network. Um, we're so glad you're here. Now, we've been talking a lot about all the things that you uh, offer um, at your program, um, and you're expanding. Well, we're, we're, we're looking at that, and you know, there's two people at the hospital that I, I, I have to acknowledge. Uh, Sarah, which is the CEO of the hospital, and Carmen, he's the vice president of, of programs. And those two individuals, they get it. They have that understanding that being Aboriginal is not a lifestyle. It's a way of life for us. Right. And uh, they, they're behind the, the, the program, um, and they're very great supporters of the Aboriginal Healing Program. Well, they must be seeing your results. I mean, changes are happening, people are doing some significant healing, um, the proof is in the pudding, and, uh, and they're backing you up on that. Well, the, the other thing is, is um, you know, th this isn't about, about me. This is about the community members. You, you know, one of the seven grandfather teachings is we always walk in hum humility. We never take credit it's the community members. Uh, some of them got their kids back. CAS files have been closed, uh, got jobs back, uh, got their families back. And it's always, you know, you heal the person, then you heal the family, then the community, and then mm. the nation. So it starts with that. Right. That's powerful. Yeah, heal the person, and then it goes out from mm -hmm. there. Yeah, excellent. Tell me about that sash on your leg. It's caught my attention. <laughs> What's that about? You know, I was um, I was very honored. Uh, Debbie uh, Ferris from the um, um, the Midland um, uh, uh, Métis office, um, when when I was told that I was receiving the uh, the Order of Ontario, um, I had asked if it would be possible if I would be able to wear this, and this is in honor and. Um, of the murdered and missing girls and women, of the indigenous women. And um, from what I was told, I was the first male to wear this. Um, and it's, it's such a humbling and, and a great honor to, to wear this, to help us re remember that. Mm. Uh, because sometimes I think we tend to forget. Yeah, so that's a reminder for yourself and for those that you interact with to remember these women. Yes, this was originally a shawl, uh, you know, things you wear over your shoulders, uh, strictly for women. And I've been told now they, also, they have actually made a sash. And uh, Debbie is, uh, has told me that there's one coming down for me now to, to wear. Right. So right. I'm very privileged. 
So for the viewers who might not realize, I, I met Elder Little Brown Bear um, Toronto this past summer um, at a retreat and I was fascinated on his ideas around uh, forgiveness and particularly around our Canadian history with the Aboriginal people and I confess to him that I was struggling with celebrating the 150 um, because it was for me almost like celebrating a time that we came in uh, our ancestors came in and took over and did some uh, quite uh, invasive things um, and I was really taken by your answer. So if we could share, you know, I, I came to you with some anger and thinking that you were going to say, yes, you're right to not celebrate 150 and be angry. And instead, um, share what you shared with me. You know, I simply, you know, said that um, forgiveness, uh, you know, we need to learn to forgive. Um, yes, these things have happened and we need to acknowledge them. But for, for, forgiveness goes a long way. It won't change what's happened, but it can alter our, our future. You know what the saddest thing is, is that it's not that we leave this world so soon. It's that we take so long to get started to live it. Mm. And so by practicing forgiveness, you're allowing yourself now to live forward. We need to acknowledge, um, but for me, I choose to look forward now. Right. I've forgiven what's happened to me in my past uh, the things that have happened uh, to me, but now I choose to live. I'm not going to be one of those that that have those regrets because re re regret becomes one of the most destructive forces in this world. Right. So I choose to look forward. So how does one forgive? Like how, what would you say your definition of is or how did that happen for you? Well, I did it during ceremony. I did it uh, in sweat lodge. Um, and ask the Creator and the spirits to help me to for forgive by presenting uh, tobacco, acknowledging those things, but knowing that I can't drag my past with me anymore. It weighs me down. So I needed to lighten my heart. It's still there. I don't need to drag it with me. Right. So you acknowledge that these things happened. It's not about um, saying it's okay what happened. No. It's ac acknowledging that happened, but no, no longer letting it determine your happiness today. Yes. Right. And um, and so then you share that message with others in this healing journey as I well. Do. To I help do. them to to go to forgiveness, mm -hmm. to make tomorrow a better, or today, a better place. Well, even for future generations as well. Because what we do today, the seven generations that are behind us, that, that are following us. So we're setting that road f for them. Right, so that we don't pass on the story of anger, hurt, bitterness to the next generations. Yes. We clear our stuff so that we're not passing it on to them. Mm -hmm. um, before we end, anything else that uh, you want to share about what you do or um, what would be valuable for the viewers to know? You know, the, the nice thing, I think I've said that we don't have waiting lists. The nice thing is, you know, people can come in to the program when they need to come in. Um, and it's an ongoing program. It's not 21 days, it's not 30 days, it's not 80 days, it's an ongoing program. We also offer two evening circles, the, uh, the community care. So it's continuing care circle for Wednesdays and the Aboriginal family circle for Thursdays. And community members are welcome to come in, but nobody is turned away. Mm. Um, I've never kicked anybody out of the program. They've been asked to leave for a day, and you know the funny thing is, is they sometimes they're confused because I say come back next day, and they go, "You're not kicking me out," and I say, "No, I'm not kicking you out." Where others do that, well, we don't do that here. I've asked right. you to come back. Everyone, everyone deserves a healing journey. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for some people, but you know what? Never give up. Never, ever, ever give up on somebody. Right. Beautiful. My philosophy has always been this, uh, Jill is people don't care how much you know, <laughs> but they want to know how much you care. Mm -hmm. And I think we always talk pishka day from the heart. And if we connect with that person from the heart, then the healing journey can start. Right. Lovely. I can feel your healing energy. Just being with you <laughs> makes me feel calm and peaceful. So there must be something, uh, there's definitely something to this. Yeah. And also, uh, I need to acknowledge my elder, uh, Dahaji. Uh, he's my elder. His name is Vern Decker. He's from Wata Territories. And uh, he's been a great friend um, to me. Um, 
um, practicing the oral traditional teachings and passing them down to me as well. So um, I just, I need to acknowledge my elder as well, so. Great, and we acknowledge you. We are so grateful that you were able to come in here today. And we have learned so much about our own healing journeys, whether we're Aboriginal or not, we all have a journey to walk and heal. Thank you, Elder LeBrown Bear, for and coming I'd like in. to pass this um, sweetgrass as, uh, as friendship. Great. So thank you. Thank you. Miigwech. And thank you for watching Awakening Within.